start because Richard Stallman took our show, so. <laughs> okay, let's go. Hello, uh, can you hear me? <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, my name is uh, Sławomir Jasek, and here is my colleague uh, Jakub Kałużny. <laughs> uh, we are both pen testers from uh, Securing from Poland. Uh, that's, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, that's from yesterday's mm, dinner uh, with, our <laughs> with our celebrity uh, woman in AppSec. <laughs> well, she didn't authorize this picture, <laughs> but <laughs> I still count on the promise that she will cheerlead our presentation. Uh, so we provided her with, uh, with the tools <laughs> to this. So please encourage her. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, besides partying, we do security assessments of various software components and uh, software applications, networks, systems, and so on, uh, among the many proprietary solutions. Uh, so uh, that's uh, obviously uh, often uh, in the real world uh, situations. Uh, that's, uh, okay. Uh, obviously, apparently, we are not uh, in, a b in our best condition <laughs> today <laughs> after yesterday's party. So uh, oh, feel free to help us uh, to find the spots some vulnerabilities in the uh, systems we will show you. Uh, and, uh, okay. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll show you our agenda for today. What? Hell. Okay, uh, so our agenda for today is showing you some real-world case study proprietary network protocols from uh, industrial uh, industrial proprietary systems uh, where they use binary protocols, binary network protocols. Uh, so here you got the list. Uh, we, we've got home automation, pool printing solutions, remote desktop, and uh, and the biggest one, forex trading software. And these are the real vulnerabilities we found during uh, our assessments. And apart from uh, showing the, the practical part, we'd like also to uh, talk something about the theory of uh, testing proprietary network protocols. And we'd like to uh, show you our, uh, our uh, approach to testing proprietary network protocols. Uh, so we'll show you the cheat sheet and we'll tell you how to hack it. So, proprietary network protocols. Uh, let's get some interaction. How many of you are pen testers? Any? One, two, three, okay, four, great. So, have you encountered a proprietary network or a binary network protocol during your tests? Or only web apps? Anyone? So, <laughs> okay. Okay, so that, that's, that, that's quite good. So. Uh, if, if you didn't, you will, because proprietary network protocols are very common. And uh, there is a problem with, uh, with testing proprietary network protocols, as uh, you don't got tools. You, you cannot use some local proxy for HTTP or something like that. Uh, you've got uh, like a raw data on the cable, and you have to think what is it and analyze it. So uh, wh what are the ways to, to test proprietary network protocols. You can uh, decompile the client if you've got, uh, for example, a, a fig client in Java or, or something like that. You can decompile it and then analyze what the software does and then uh, write your own client, for example. You can search for some tools. Uh, uh, there are some tools that, that help uh, in testing proprietary network protocols, for example, uh, SCAPI for, uh, for uh, intercepting the traffic and, and so on. Uh, but what we do mostly and what uh, worked in our cases was actually watching the raw packets on the cable, analyzing them just with, uh, just with like, our minds and uh, writing, um, writing actually own clients or replay uh, scripts for these protocols, uh, only tampering some data. So let's try to do this. Uh, uh, the first example is Slavex. Uh, okay, uh, so for a teaser, our uh, first example, it's quite simple. Uh, there's a mm, protocol to uh, remotely control your home automation uh, system. Um, you get um, a small device uh, appliance from the vendor, you connect it uh, to the home automation network and on the other end uh, to the local network. Uh, you 
configure your router for port forwarding uh, to direct access uh, from the internet to, to this appliance. Yeah, that's strange. <laughs> uh, but uh, that's how it works. And uh, there's a proprietary network protocol which uh, connects directly uh, to, the, to this appliance. Uh, and the, the, the connection is, uh, is uh, secured by the password. <coughs> so <laughs> let's have a look at a few packets, how it looks. Uh, that's uh, what the client sends. Uh, and uh, that's the answer of the server. Uh, well, then the client sends something like that, and server sends, uh, again, something similar. Uh, can you think of something uh, particularly interesting there? Uh, do you have any idea how to attack this protocol? Any ideas? Yeah? My rough idea is that I've seen lots of duplication of the response. An idea that my rough idea is that I, since I see so much duplication in the response that there might be some uh, encryption using uh, padding. So maybe a very short encryption key for a longer message. That's my rough guess. Uh, well, uh, the truth is uh, much simpler <laughs> because, uh, in fact, uh, we could use, uh, in the, our testing environment, we could change uh, some, some, some things and, uh, for example, change the password. We can configure it uh, and look how, it's, how the packets behave. For example, this is how it looks with uh, first password. This is how it looks with the second password and with the third password. <laughs> uh, well, obviously, you can see <laughs> where the password is. <laughs> so, uh, of course, it's some kind of uh, obfuscation. So, it turned out that, uh, in fact, uh, the client sends just an uh, internal command, which is directly uh, transferred to the home automation network, uh, and it's followed by uh, MD5 of the first byte of the, first byte of the password. Uh, and then, the server responds uh, in a clear text uh, with the status of the, the, this whole uh, appliance, uh, I mean, sensors, settings, and so on. So obviously, uh, this is vulnerable, <laughs> of course, for sniffing, uh, because we can see the internal status of this appliance. Uh, we can do man in the middle, of course. We can connect directly to the, to the appliance. We don't need to know the clear text password, because we just, it's just enough to know the hash. So. Uh, the recommendation was uh, SSL uh, to encrypt the, 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 the traffic and uh, uh, Vendor added this SSL support. Uh, it took a while because uh, they had to uh, deploy it on all of these uh, appliances uh, at the clients. Uh, well, uh, they did, in fact, it turned out that they did something like that. So. I guess uh, you all see what's the problem. <laughs> uh, yes, <laughs> exactly. They uh, created empty trust manager, uh, which uh, accepted all the certificates. Well, it's a very common problem in uh, uh, Android applications because uh, the client was an Android application. Uh, but uh, of course, uh, that didn't help uh, to, to remove all the problems with that. We can still do many in the middle. So. They have to patch it <laughs> at this moment right now. Uh, an interesting thing was uh, a side effect uh, because their business model was to uh, provide an expensive appliance uh, and, uh, of course, uh, free applications on the Google Play Store and uh, uh, iOS. Uh, so uh, it turned out uh, that after decompiling this protocol, uh, I could just uh, use this five bytes uh, and uh, send it to uh, the internal uh, home automation network, cut off the password because it's not necessary for me. Uh, so I can simulate uh, this uh, appliance with uh, the single line of code. <laughs> uh, and uh, of course I had to alter it a little bit uh, for the SSL support and create a, a self-signed certificate. Uh, and uh, it runs perfectly well on my Raspberry Pi. <laughs> uh, so um, that's uh, some kind of interesting case. <laughs> so uh, that's uh, it for, for this first case. This is true. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Oh, you have a mic. 
Okay, and now let's switch to pool printing. So, I've been recently doing uh, big research on pool printing solutions. Uh, uh, first, I will try to explain you what is a pool printing solution. Like in normal uh, normal situation, you would print directly, you would print files directly to the printer. Uh, but you know, in big offices, in, in banks, in financial corporations, you use pool printing solution, which is uh, which works like that. The user sends the file to the server. It's held in a print queue. Uh, then he walks to the printer because there are many printers in the building. Uh, he authenticates there, for example, with a card swipe or um, just by typing the password. Then the printer sends some request to the server uh, to collect the uh, the print job from the print queue. Uh, it's released by the server. The, the files go, go this way. And uh, maybe later there is some communication to uh, send information about charging for, uh, for this action. So uh, we've been testing this uh, pool printing solution in one of the banks. And we found so many vulnerabilities in there uh, that uh, we thought maybe we can just buy a printer and hack more vendors because there are uh, many many vendors who produce this pool printing solution and it worked. Uh, so, uh, why pool printing solutions are so interesting? Because well, first of all, they are widely used. They are used in banks, as I said, in, in financial institutions, big corporations, because they all handle a lot of confidential data and the data is there. The, this is the target for our attacks. Uh, and it's getting very, very popular. In, uh, for example, in Poland, uh, the financial government institution, uh, which, uh, which publishes some uh, references for banks, uh, recommended to banks that all the files in the bank, all the printed files should be encrypted on the way between the server and the printer. So now uh, banks are deploying pool printing solutions. Uh, so. Yeah, let's 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 get us some interaction. Uh, so, wh what would you say? Uh, let's make a quick threat modeling on pool printing solution. What would you say? What is the cure risk for uh, for a pool printing solution? Anybody? Yeah, just shout it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good one. <laughs> okay. Yeah, exactly. So, if, uh, getting to the print queue of director, let's say, and print some contracts or payrolls. Anybody else? Okay. So, so we're talking about. First of all, sniffing the documents on the line between the server and the printer, uh, getting to the other print queues, uh, tampering the accountability. So for example, printing uh, for free, uh, for example, at the university, and getting users' data, printing history, and, and some more, more users' data. So the attack vectors for these solutions are uh, many in the middle attack on the line between the server and the printer, and will also access to the other print queues there. Uh, we'll try authorization bypass near the printer and uh, stealing users' data on the mm, server interfaces. And if there are any, for example, web interfaces, we'll try to find some vulnerabilities there. Uh, so I would like to show you first binary protocol uh, because mostly uh, the pool printing solutions are deployed as a embedded software installed to a printer. These are like big printers, 50 kilo. We bought a, like a 50 or 60 kilo Lexmark X654DE, and they, they've got everything, um, hard disks, uh, USB ports, Ethernet ports, and so on and so on, and embedded system, uh, and the possibility to install embedded software there. So the first case study was uh, pool printing, uh, which, uh, which is mainly used on universities. And they write on their website that with its root in education and the full understanding that college kids like to hack, their development process continually focuses on security. And we'll try to challenge that. That that's, sounds like a challenge for me. If I see something like that, I, I'll just take out my laptop. And they, they also say that secure print release can integrate card swipe authentication at devices. And it ensures that the jobs are only printed when the collecting user is present. And yeah, we love to uh, see the vendor claims and to verify those claims. 
So the first binary protocol uh, is uh, was it was uh, it was encrypted, but uh, for this case, I I'll just take out the encryption level and show you what what, what were the packets. So. First, the server sent some hello message. The printer responded with the username. The server sent a token. The printer responded with a hash of this password plus token. Uh, the server verifies if, if the password is okay. Then the printer sends the actual communicate uh, to release the print queue. Or for example, I copied 100 pages, charged me for it. And then the server says, okay. So what would you say? Where, where to inject, where to tamper the, this protocol to, to get some vulnerabilities? I would try to call the methods out of order. So try to release my print queue command before you look at the password and see what happens. Mm, okay. Now the, the authentication was, uh, was needed to, to uh, do this communicates. It, it was. It, it is one TCP connection. It's not like HTTP uh, different requests. It's just in one, one uh, TCP TCP connection. Anybody? Okay. So like, <laughs> mostly, uh, people say that they would inject, for example, uh, try to break this hash and uh, and try to authenticate uh, as another user. We tried to do this, but actually after a few days spent on this, uh, we found that the hash, pass the hash algorithm is okay. Uh, the token is, uh, is perfectly random. Uh, it's one-time token and, and everything here is okay until this moment. Because this communicates, you are actually quite right. This, these are, the, these are the, key, uh, the key communicates in this communication. Uh, so I'll show you what, how does it look on the wire. So on the wire, it was a binary protocol with some clear text, let's say. Uh, first, uh, the server, well, the, the blue ones are from the server. So the server responded if, if, the, if the authentication was okay uh, and sent some uh, permissions, user permissions. Uh, for example, if he can copy in color or for example, something like this. Of course, later it turned out that there are also vulnerabilities there. But we tried to tamper uh, the communicate from the printer to release the print queue. So the guest XYZ was the username of uh, which was authenticated. And of course, yeah, what we tried, we tried to change it to another user, let's say guest ABC. And it worked. So already after authentication, we authenticated as, as guest XYZ and then we just get the print queue of guest ABC because there was no uh, authorization check later. So actually, this was not a communicate release my print queue, but it was release print queue for user I typed and not just copied 100 pages, but charge user I typed for copying 100 pages. So the consequences of this attack were actually, uh, <laughs> it, it fully broke all key risks for, for pull printing solution. Uh, we, we'll, we were able to sniff uh, print other print queues, uh, temper the accountability and still uses data. But I say that this, is, uh, this was a very positive example. We, uh, this was our third or, or fourth case of pool printing solution and we tried to reach the vendor before the penetration test and we just asked, hi, uh, we'd like to hack you. Uh, do you want to give us uh, the software? And they gave us support service and knowledge base and uh, all versions of the software uh, after getting, uh, after sending them the report, they responded in a few hours and patched and actually uh, they deployed the patch and uh, gave it to their clients because they, they had many clients uh, in a few days. So it's, that's the vendor that we would like to uh, cooperate with. This was, they, they really looked happy to be pen tested, which, which mostly in, in uh, other five cases of pool printing solution didn't work. Okay. So the next uh, next case study is Slavic. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, so next uh, example is some uh, remote desktop protocol. Uh, it's we would say it's um, some kind of X windows uh, uh, with added layers of encryption, uh, compression, access control, and so on. It's uh, used mainly uh, for mainframe access, uh, for example, in uh, banks or financial institutions. 
uh, to graphically uh, display some kind of uh, some kind of programs, for example, to, for foreign exchange or something like that. Uh, the vendor states that uh, there's more than 100,000 users around the world, and uh, that uh, they are FIPS 140 uh, certificated. Uh, so they are supposed to be the protocol is supposed to be secure. Uh, so uh, let's have a look at it. <laughs> uh, the first packet sent by the client looked like this. Uh, that's uh, the second packet uh, responded to, uh, the response of the server, and uh, what follows uh, is basically an SSL. So. Uh, of course, we can hack the SSL. Uh, we'll get to it later because uh, it was vulnerable too. <laughs> but <laughs> uh, any ideas for what can we do about the first two packets? Excuse me. Yes, of course. We we have tried all the values over there, uh, but uh, it turned out that the server didn't. Uh, took us uh, for serious. <laughs> I mean, uh, it, it, the server didn't respond for anything else than uh, 0, 0101. 0, 1. But uh, if you tried uh, other value as a response uh, from the server to the client, uh, it turned out uh, that the client uh, dropped the SSL and uh, uh, connected it uh, in a clear text. So uh, it turned out that this is the protocol version, uh, and uh, the previous version of the protocol uh, did not support SSL. So uh, it's some kind of backwards compatibility of the client, uh, which uh, after receiving this response from the server, uh, connected through the clear text. Uh, so of course, uh, mm, a malicious user could do man in the middle of, of this uh, first two packets, sent to the client uh, this modified uh, answer from the server uh, in order to get uh, clear text, almost clear text credentials. So uh, here we have uh, user login and uh, encoded password. So <laughs> uh, of course, uh, this uh, encoded password is uh, very interesting for us too. So uh, we find out that uh, after uh, Entering uh, a longer password, it's uh, uh, the encoded version is also longer, so uh, it's re some kind of uh, obfuscation or something like that. Uh, so uh, we took, uh, for example, uh, this uh, password, which is encoded uh, in ASCII hex like that, uh, and uh, the hashed version of it looked like that. So it was uh, the same length. <laughs> Uh, any ideas? What can we do about it? <laughs> uh, yes, we can change one letter, and uh, there also changes one letter. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so. Well, could it be uh, the most popular encryption? I mean, crappy encryption method. Uh, I mean, XOR. <laughs> well, uh, let's have a look. Uh, we can XOR these two values. I mean, this is clear text password. This is encoded one. And uh, we get something like that, uh, which after decoding uh, this uh, ASCII hex, uh, turned out to be a company name which created this wonderful software, uh, which was, in fact, uh, the key uh, that encrypted uh, this, uh, uh, this password. Uh, so, uh, of course, we can uh, we can get a clear text of, of this password when we know the key. <laughs> uh, the, the, uh, let's get back to the SSL. Uh, in default configuration, uh, the server uh, didn't have any certificates configured, uh, so uh, it couldn't uh, uh, do any of this uh, uh, DSS, RSA, or something like that. Uh, he could offer to the client only uh, anonymous uh, cipher suit. So obviously this is uh, vulnerable to the many the middle attack. <laughs> and that's the configuration we saw in the real world. Uh, but uh, of course it's vulnerable as you can see. 
but let's assume that uh, someone properly configured uh, this uh, certificates on the server, uh, and uh, the communication looked like looked like this: the client says, "Client, hello." Uh, server uh, responds with proper certificate. Uh, during the first connection, uh, client pops uh, a question: uh, "Do you accept the certificate?" Uh, you can check, uh, for example, MD5 of the of a, a fingerprint. Uh, so uh, that uh, during the following connections, uh, the client uh, can verify if the certificate is still the same, and if there's uh, some kind of man-in-the-middle attack, it can uh, send an alert. <laughs> so, uh, any ideas? What can we do about this this protocol? How can we hack it? Uh, excuse me? Uh, previous certificate. Uh, yes, it, it does valid. Uh, well, let's assume that uh, this configuration was uh, mm, during the first connection, the certificate was uh, configured in secret, uh, properly, uh, pro proper uh, network, and nobody could uh, nobody could tamper this first uh, communications. Uh, and uh, on the following connections, uh, it checks if the certificate uh, stored during the first connection is, is the same. So uh, you can't do this kind of man in the middle attack. How about, uh, you remember this. What if we uh, changed the server answer so that it answers something like that? Uh, so uh, we would expect uh, that the client uh, would drop this connection because uh, the client has uh, the certificate already stored. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, uh, client does accept this connection, uh, forgets that it has uh, already configured certificate, uh, and uh, happily connects to the server. So we can do, uh, by downgrading this protocol, uh, we could do man in the middle, uh, and send uh, to the client uh, the, the anonymous cipher suit. Uh, the communications, the communication with this vendor didn't go very well, uh, so after Initially setting a secure communication channel, which wasn't very, uh, very uh, obvious <laughs> for them, uh, uh, it didn't go very well. I mean, we sent a few emails uh, that if they need any help, uh, do they uh, plan to solve this in a timeline? Uh, we would like to help them. Uh, maybe we, 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 we need some help. Uh, well, they we felt a little bit uh, ignored. Uh, so after a few months, uh, we decided to go full disclosure, <laughs> uh, our favorite. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, the, the vendor didn't react to that. Uh, I'm not sure how it affects the FIPS 140 certification, uh, but uh, uh, it's still not, uh, not repaired. Uh, a few weeks later, the but a few weeks later, they closed the full disclosure. Uh, I guess uh, that's just a coincidence. <laughs> uh, so uh, let's go to, the, to another example. Yeah, OK. <laughs> <laughs> OK, let's go back to the full printing. More cool examples of full printing solutions. Uh, well, actually, I didn't know how, how much cool was the full printing solutions topic, but uh, until it, get, it got accepted into every conference I sent the paper for. <laughs> so the second vendor states on his website that it is a modern printing solution that safeguards document confidentiality and unauthorized access to print, scan, copy, and email functions. And it provides airtight security. So yeah, we love it. Uh, when someone says airtight security, again, I take out my laptop. So. Some more corporate blabbling from the vendor. He states that the documents are delivered only into the right hands. The information is kept confidential. There is no risk. Uh, well, everything is safe anytime and anywhere, and the workflow is kept secure. So we would like to challenge these uh, claims and 
and check the binary protocol. So on the first look uh, on the communication, we saw that it is TCP using two connections on two ports. There was no clear text. There was some encryption inside. Uh, but it seemed to follow some scheme, and I would like to show you this scheme. So again, the, let's first make some quantitative analysis of the traffic. So first there were some free communicates, uh, the server, printer, and the server, some kind of hello. Uh, then a lot of encrypted uh, small packets. After uh, this, a huge load of data from the server. Anything? Do you know what is it? F files, yeah. So, uh, but they were encrypted. So, now the, the real analysis of the, of the inside communication. So, the first communicate was always 263 uh, bytes. And it was constant. So, some kind of hello message. It, it looked like that, uh, whereas there is some new server crypt. So, probably there is some encryption inside. Uh, a lot of null byte padding, that's not interesting. Then, the, this communicate was, was the most interesting. It contained uh, some null byte beginning, 96 bytes. Then, uh, I will call it variable x bytes, I will explain it later. And uh, um, null byte padding. So, it was, we were able to configure this solution and uh, in the admin panel it was possible to change the encryption. And you can choose between RSA 512 bits, RSA 1K, and RSA 2K. So this is an example of RSA uh, 512 bits. And as you can see, this is uh, 64 bytes, so that makes uh, 500. So what is it? Yeah, the public key of, and actually, it, in this case, the printer sen sends uh, its public key. So yeah, we thought that it was a certificate, just like in SSL. Uh, then we thought that it would be a public key, but actually that's only 512 bits. So it actually turned out that it is a modulus number of the public key. Uh, and this is the only information about the, the key. So mm, the server responded with always different 64 bytes. So what should it be? Good. The, yeah, the session, the, yeah, the session key for the encryption, for the symmetric encryption inside. Uh, okay, many identical blocks in this huge load of data. What is it? Uh, I've got a picture. Okay, maybe you recognize this Linux penguin. This is a bitmap of Linux penguin. So what happens if you encrypt uh, bitmap with ECB mode of encryption, electronic code book. That's it. And, and that's the same what happens with the, with the print files, because the printed files are the uh, postscript job files, which are basically text files. So it's extractable. It's, it's, maybe it's not very easy, but it's possible to decrypt uh, just the files on the sniffing the traffic. OK. So we had to make some uh, assumptions for the mm, proof of concept script. So if it was an SSL, it should be a hello, then a hello certificate, a session key, postscript, uh, ECB mode, encrypted files. Uh, yeah, and that's it. So after, yeah, it took us quite a lot of time to disassemble this, uh, this protocol uh, to set the proper, uh, proper parameters for the encryption. Uh, it, Turned out that there is a hard-coded RSA certificate in the printer embedded software, private key, private certificate. Uh, the server contains no trust store. In this case, the, uh, the um, client is the printer, so the server should have a trust store uh, of, uh, of uh, acceptable certificates, but there was no. EIES uh, 128 ECB mode of encryption used for traffic inside. So this is really not a good idea for, for uh, print jobs. And we found the same protocol in admin interface, which actually the interfaces, the user and the printer and the admin interface were not separated. So we could um, do a man in the middle attack also on the admin interface. The consequences of this attack, again, the same. Uh, all key risks are broken. But the most funny part, actually tiring, very tiring for us, was contacting with the vendor. He responded that, sorry, 
Many of the devices do not have the CPU power that allows a fast logging response and at the same time establish a high security level. So this is the problem that um, the pool printing vendors face. Uh, they face the problem to choose between uh, high security level and the fast logging response and <laughs> they choose the fast logging response. And they stated that changing ECB to CBC mode of encryption will be more CPU intensive and may cause slower performance. Uh, which the customers are very reluctant to see implemented. And we tried to convince them that uh, the printer's processors are uh, single-threaded. And on a single-threaded process processor, you actually don't, do, not, you do not see the real difference between ECB and CBC mode of encryption in case of speed. Uh, because ECB mode is faster, yeah, because it can be uh, paralleled. And with no parallel computing, uh, CBC is as fast as ECB, maybe like 5% slower. Uh, they tried to convince us that they are secure because the system has been deployed at many high security customers and has passed internal audits. <laughs> so yeah, they passed because their penetration testing company was actually not very good. Uh, okay, that's for the pool printing now, Slavic and okay, um, Forex trading software. Another example is uh, an online application for instant financial, instant financial operations. Uh, it turned out that these operations are so quick that uh, they had to design a binary protocol because HTTP was uh, not fast enough. So they uh, uh, encrypted it in, in SSL tunnel, a single TCP connection. Uh, the SSL was uh, properly configured, so we uh, looked uh, into the packets after decrypting, uh, but they didn't look very much readable. <laughs> uh, so we looked uh, further and further. Uh, well, here we can see some kind of uh, information. Uh, I guess that's uh, maybe stock quotations. Uh, but uh, we looked further to the packets and uh, there's some clear text coming uh, until finally we saw something like that, uh, which was particularly interesting. Uh, let's have uh, a look at it in uh, ASCII mode. What could it be? Uh, excuse me? <laughs> that, is that a SOAP remote procedure call? Um, yes, exactly. Uh, it's uh, encoded in this binary protocol, uh, the SOAP. Uh, so uh, here we have uh, for example, probably the path. Uh, here we have probably the method. And here we have uh, an answer from the server. So, uh, of course, we tried to uh, interrupt it somehow. Uh, it took a while uh, to decompose the binary protocol and uh, to, to wrap properly uh, these values. Uh, but we were able to do something like that, for example. Uh, apparently, uh, the access admin wasn't properly configured on this server, so we tried uh, other uh, uh, brute forcing other methods, uh, and we found uh, register user method. So uh, after invoking this method, server responded incorrect login. So uh, any ideas? Well. We thought that uh, we don't have uh, proper uh, authentication. We need, uh, for example, login and password. But it turned out uh, that uh, we didn't provide the parameter to the method, which was the login of the user to create. Uh, so uh, after providing uh, this parameter, it's, uh, the server responded incorrect password. So uh, of course, we added another para parameter, which was the password. Uh, the server is called the incorrect first name, and then a uh, group with name now doesn't exist. So, what would you try? <laughs> uh, a group with uh, admin. <laughs> so, it didn't work. Any other ideas? Administrator didn't work. <laughs> uh, user, no, it didn't work. Sorry. <laughs> uh, excuse me? Uh, yeah. Root, yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, we have uh, sent them uh, this message with uh, the root group, and the server responded like that. 
uh, of course, uh, we tried to authenticate on to, to that user, and it turned out uh, we can manage all the other accounts <laughs> of the whole system. Uh, it was, uh, in fact, a system which hundred thousand, hundred thousands of users, which mm, uh, dealt with billions of dollars, and we could, uh, in this single packet, uh, we could create administrative, admi administrative user uh, without even having, uh, without even being a client of the system. So uh, that's uh, what I like in this job. <laughs> <laughs> After dealing with this subject almost 10 years, I still find this job very absorbing. <laughs> so, uh, and uh, that's just because of the emotions uh, it gives uh, during uh, such, uh, such uh, hacking. Uh, so, uh, the vendor uh, couldn't understand how we did it. Uh, they were sure that someone has uh, had misconfigured, misconfigured uh, this firewall. So we could uh, directly invoke the SOAP methods. Uh, they couldn't believe that we could decode the binary protocol. So, <laughs> uh, of course, uh, there were many other problems, not uh, just uh, the, this uh, uh, applications there, application there, but uh, there were no separations of uh, administrative and uh, uh, internal web service uh, uh, calls. and. Uh, two excessive error messages re returned by the server. Uh, so uh, without that, we couldn't hack it, uh, uh, black boss at least. Uh, so. Uh, okay, so now some few cheat sheets. Uh, I think we are quite out of time. When, when should we end? Yeah, maybe. Maybe, yeah, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Uh, okay, so. Uh, well, if you deploy a proprietary network protocol, if you're an owner of, su uh, of such solution, uh, remember to get it pen tested by a good company to verify the vendor claims. And you have to ask like, for the secure development lifecycle, how do they handle vulnerabilities, how did they handle any vulnerabilities that existed before, and so on. Look for the CFAWI lists and so on and so on, the previous bugs. Uh, and for the developers. Uh, remember that protocol is not secure by its secrecy. It doesn't work like security by obscurity, mostly. Uh, remember to use a proper encryption and uh, try to avoid writing your own cryptography. It doesn't work and probably will mess it up. Uh, use known standards. Maybe, maybe SSL contains Heartbleed, but still it gets fixed in a few hours. Not just like your uh, software. So remember about input validation, the access control inside the protocol, because th these are the, like, this is the most popular uh, vulnerability in proprietary network protocols we test, the access control inside the protocol. Uh, yeah, use many layers of security as much as possible. Network layer security, VLANs, uh, SSL 802.1x, and so on and so on. The least privileged principle is, is like the most important. And beware the backwards compatibility like in this uh, remote desktop protocols. Okay, Slavic turn. So, uh, about uh, the hacking of, this, of these protocols, the, there's no simple answer how to do that uh, because there are many ways to do it and uh, the proper answer would be that depends uh, because uh, during the penetration testing, uh, you usually have very limited time and you just have to choose the right path, which uh, is the shortest path to, 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 to your aim. Uh, so, uh, of course, uh, for the beginning, uh, we could try to understand this protocol uh, to find uh, its, uh, I don't know, its uh, internal structure, uh, its uh, syntax, and so on. So we could uh, try to get some uh, documentation. It sometimes works. Uh, you can search for the, this documentation uh, on, a, for example, developers uh, API or something like that. Uh, we found internal protocol specification just by Google hacking. Uh, so, uh, of course, you can try to decompile the client or uh, instrumentate the client. There are tools for that, but they have some uh, some uh, shortcuts too. Uh, but uh, 
sometimes decompiling, de decompiling of the client is very easy. Uh, for example, not obfuscated Android application, we were able uh, to get uh, to this MD5 I was talking about uh, in this Android source, uh, but sometimes it's uh, very hard and uh, time consuming, uh, so uh, it may not be the shortest path. <laughs> Uh, so you could try to analyze this network. Uh, there are tools for that. Uh, they look very promising and great, uh, but uh, we didn't manage to uh, use them in a limited time. I mean, uh, they, uh, they are great, for example, for uh, academic research and uh, scientific uh, uh, analysis of the protocol. Uh, but they didn't help us uh, <coughs> a lot. Uh, we just tried to tried to spot some scheme of the packets, uh, of course with a little help of, of other tools, and uh, used our favorite scripting languages. <laughs> uh, so uh, we uh, created uh, a small cheat sheet, which we will, I hope, uh, uh, in a few days upload to the OWASP website about testing proprietary protocols and it will be available uh, on, uh, on the OWASP, OWASP uh, <laughs> website. So uh, thank you for your attention and uh, any questions? <laughs> Well, we didn't have to uh, because uh, uh, the SSL was uh, properly configured. Uh, so we uh, uh, did uh, upload our own uh, certificate to the client uh, so that we could uh, do man in the middle yeah. and attack the internals of the protocol on the server side. Uh, watch uh, how the how this internal protocol looks and so on. Thanks a lot. Do you have any? Uh, have you had any experience attacking um, network protocols uh, designed using Google protocol buffers? Yeah. Well, I. And if you found any problems with that, do you use protocol buffers or just because they use this software? Uh, well. We, uh, well, I, I've been doing some kind of small research in that topic, but with no obvious vulnerabilities. Yeah, well, fuzzing. Well, did some fuzzing, like tampering the parameters is actually the fuzzing, I would say, but yeah, well, uh, we didn't pass the, the, the Google uh, protocol. Okay, any other questions? Nope. Okay, thank you. Możesz znaleźć połączenie nam teraz? 